It looks like we do have our next guest. Uh, we're joined by Amin. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. We uh, stole your line again this morning. Uh, did uh, that, you? Yeah. Do you need a blockchain or do you need a therapist? Yeah. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to be claiming it as my own. But right now it's Amin's line uh, from his speech yesterday. He had some great slides. Yes. And uh, welcome to the show. Cheers. Cheers. It's fun to be here. I've been following you since like 2014, 13 or something. I don't know how long I've been around, but for a long time. It's funny actually, like, you know, you see like the nicknames and then you meet people in real life, you're like, oh wow, you're real people, you know? That's right. <laughs> it's like, I spend most of my time talking to nicknames, so it's oh, quite yeah. different. You know, it's oh. old and you know, Oh, I got it. But yeah. And like, the thing is, right, on the, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, you actually brought up the laptop thing. I actually wanted to speak about that. I mean, you know, any any attack on there, what they're doing, but you know, it still has Intel chips in there. So mm -hmm. even if it's called like this very purified, you know, laptop, it still has Intel processors <coughs> in there. And until you remove that, have open source hardware, you know, you can't guarantee anything. You know, you can market it as much as you want and say you've done the best at the software level, but if you've got Intel processors in there, like. Still That's right, and we've seen with this recent major news story that really I have not talked about as much as I'd like to talk about. I think it's a very important story. Uh, allegedly, and we always say that, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Chinese put some chips inside of motherboards, very small mm. chip, and uh, everyone says, oh, what's the big deal? We've had software hacks before, but this is a hardware hack. Yeah. And what it means is that they're actually inside the computer, and they can change the code as it's running. So if the code says, check the password file, make sure this password matches, and they edit the code to say, check the password file, make sure the password matches blank, uh, you can just log right in. Yeah. And you have full access to the system, you can do anything you want. Uh, this is a major threat uh, to businesses, to people, to privacy, and even to the government and the military. As I said earlier, Amazon recently got a plum contract with the Department of Defense to build the Pentagon's new cloud. So <laughs> if Amazon uses the same chips in this big cloud, they just let presumably the Chinese government or hackers uh, into their system. It's a major big deal. Well, and like they're you probably say, already in the system anyways, you know? So now it's just an easy way. So you, just, you just bump into <laughs> other hackers there. It's just a bunch yeah. of people stealing data, and uh, the normal people don't even have access yeah. anymore. It's just all hackers. Yeah, it's all very interesting. You know, um, yesterday, I guess, uh, there was there was a lot of dif different discussions going on, but I think, overall, I think people need to educate themselves on these topics a lot more. You know, the concept of privacy and the concept of... Uh, being able to have these rights, I think people have forgotten what rights were and how they were earned, you know? Mm -hmm. I was writing this to like a friend the other day because in Australia, they're pushing all these ridiculous laws like a guy, you can get sent to jail for 10 years if you don't unlock your phone. Um, yeah, they're pushing all these laws so you can't have encryption, you can't have these systems. A guy in Sydney airport was uh, asked to, you know, his laptop was taken away and like searched without his authority and he, when he questioned why this is happening, they simply just didn't give him an answer. So a lot of these things are occurring because I think people are just, it's, it's like, you know, I, it, there's a spoiled children born mm. to rich parents. Right. They don't know the value of the money, so they just go crazy and do a lot of stupid stuff, you know, also known as Trump. But that's, <laughs> a, different, uh, uh, that's, that's a different story. But like, the same thing is happening with freedom. Like, none of us had to go in a battle line or do like a civil, civil movement or anything like that to earn it. It was kind of handed to us. And those like us that have a bit more respect for it, you know, we go around and tell people about it. But unfortunately, I think a lot of the people just don't know. And until it's taken away from them, they may never realize the potential of what was given to them. Like, people lost their lives to get us out of the dark ages. Right. People, you know, were ostracized. People were literally beheaded in the middle of the town to get us some rights. You know, in Switzerland, a lot of people don't realize, like, their freedom comes from many uh, civil, civil movements and a lot, of, a lot of tragedies that gave them those rights. So once you forget those actual elements that provide you with those freedom, with those uh, you know liberties that we take for granted, well, a lot of people do anyways, then they can simply come and take them away from you because you don't know how much they're worth, you know? And that's what's going on around the world. It's just like being stripped from us. And then China with its citizen rating, I mean, what do you do there, man? Oh, and it's definitely coming here, too. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard, China has a, like a version of Facebook that's compulsory, and if you're friends with someone who's a revolutionary, they downrate you. And if you jaywalk, they downrate you. And they can actually limit your travel. You can't go out of your area. You have to stay in your zone if you're 
friends with too many bad people or you have too low of a score. Uh, we're seeing the Apple Watches. At first, they're kind of fun, right? But now that they have EKGs in them, an insurance company has already said, we're no longer offering traditional policies. From now on, if you want insurance from us, you have to wear an Apple Watch all the time. What? And it's only a matter of time before they do that on smoking, on how much activity you get. Right now, my watch tells me to stand up, and it's an option. Soon, you'll be required by your insurance company to stand up and take a walk. Uh, better for your health, um, but also certainly not in your control. Very 1984 and Orwellian. Did they at least give you the watch for free? <laughs> I don't yeah, think so. I'm sure you have to buy it, but I can see already you're going to sign up. Yeah. Uh, you're getting the forms out already, I can see. Well, it's like Adolfo said yesterday that his kids don't know the the kind of meaning of real privacy because no. you're like people now are we're so used to sharing everything we do we share on Facebook or if you use it or WhatsApp or you know even Twitter as a pseudonym and and you've kind of got no problem with that and there's always going to be someone that knows your pseudonym no matter how much you try and protect it. Um, and so because of we're kind of so open to sharing, the lines are being blurred and it's more difficult to tell when the governments are really encroaching on your privacy because yeah. of all the other systems that we have in place where sharing is kind of a, you know, a good thing or yeah. you know, socially acceptable. I think it's also interesting you brought that up because there's a massive shift where we go from being a victim to being empowered with these blockchain protocols and tools and that are decentralized that are coming out where it's like on one hand, uh, you know, I always talk about this when I do my presentations, it's like, does it make sense for you to give your money to the bank, who then use it to invest to make more money, in a lot, some cases even lose the money, 2008, you know, a lot of people globally lost their money, and on top of that you pay fees. So it's like me going to you going, hey man, can I have some, well not can I, like give me your money, I'm going to invest it, make some money, by the way, give me like 10 bucks a month for, for, for holding your money as well, you know, it's account fees, I've got to look after your stuff. I mean, it's just absurd. And this, this shift in mentality needs to occur where it's like, why am I paying you to hold my money and then you tell me when and where I can access it and then you also may lose it or invest it for your own good anyways. I mean, this shift needs to occur. So now we have these systems where it's like, all right, give us your information, but we'll pay you for it. We'll ask every time we want, you know? Mm -hmm. And this shift needs to occur where people go from being a victim where it's like, Oh, they're taking all my information. Like people think Facebook is free. It's not free. Whatever is free, you pay for it one way or another. Right. You are like, the I'm product. Sure you understand yeah, this. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. yeah, you are the product. Like whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter. If it's free, I would much rather pay for a service five bucks or ten bucks a month. And they say we're not gonna leak anything. Cool man. Like YouTube pops out ads all the time. I know they have YouTube Red in the states, but in most countries they don't have it. Like I would much rather pay five bucks and leave me alone with the advertisement. Just give me the choice. Like if Facebook <coughs> was like, hey, we share and sell your data, or you pay 10 bucks a month and we don't do anything, I would be like, bro, I'll give you 20 bucks. That's you know? right, that's you know? right. Leave me, leave my data alone, like, give me privacy, give me peer-to-peer -peer, you know, encryption, give me these tools. But unfortunately, we don't have these things. So I, I want to see this shift, and it is occurring where, you know, I get a pop-up message, let's say I'm at the doctor, it's like your doctor is requesting to access your medical record, you're authorized. And, like, and I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I can check, like, for example, in the same way Telegram pops up with the icons. Yeah, doctor, can I see your icons? Yep, they match. It is actually you. Authorize the person. But I always carry the data with me, you know. And there's an organization called Sits to Meet in the Netherlands, which I think is quite interesting. It was the first co-working space in the world. In 2007, they established this in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And it was very, very interesting. Um, and... You know, the way they do it is all the information of you going to these spaces is carried on a passport and that's yours. And wherever you go to other spaces, they have it on like 28 countries, like 300 different locations. Um, so you can go to those spaces and share your information and it's your passport, it's yours, you know. And this is the shift that's occurring where you give out everything and you don't know where it is and they sell it, they make money to you are the owner as it should be and you determine who you want to give it to. And if you do, you may be rewarded for it. And if you don't want the reward, then don't share it. And we have examples of this, like with Flixo, uh, which is a platform, uh, you know, trying to replace what YouTube and all these other platforms do. Where, all right, you don't, you don't have enough credit to watch the video, watch a, watch a few advertisements, and then you have credit. Um, or you can upload the credit yourself and not watch any advertisement. So I think these, these you know, shifts in uh, mentality are occurring, and the future generation need to be uh, educated on, it, on how, how to do it. Uh, I think right now a lot of people have no idea, you know, like a lot of times it's like, why, why should I care, I'm not doing anything wrong, and this is so toxic, 
know. Well, and I've seen an interesting shift uh, just coming here to Europe. Like you said, YouTube Red doesn't work, so I'm still paying for it, and it doesn't work. Uh, also, they have all these cookie warnings on every page I visit, mm. and they take up half the page. Yeah. And what's so sad about this is the government is they're trying to do the right thing, right? <laughs> Cookies are horrible, and they should get rid of them. But the problem is, all I do is click I accept on everywhere because yeah. I just want to read the article. Yeah. And it's not that I accept and that I've been warned about cookies. And one time I clicked I don't accept, and they started giving me granular control, which is great. But the people still don't know what's going on. Why not just ban the tracking cookies, don't put up the message, and don't tell me about it and actually protect my freedom instead of what it is now where it's like, we are tracking you, and we're wasting your time. <laughs> and it's, just, it's just the worst of both possible worlds. So. I suppose it's the balance, though, of choice and you know, people that want to choose but to have. It, the uh, button says "I accept." Yeah. Like the button should say "Go to hell." Yeah. Like the default that's button: true. "Go to hell." Go to hell. Go to hell. But that's kind of the cross button in the top, the, you know, the top left or top. It's still right. like you hide yeah. it from the interface. It takes up half the screen. Yeah. I visit these pages several times. I seem to get one every web page I go to. Do you accept that we're tracking you everywhere and that we're being really creepy with Amazon and that Amazon knows every web page you visit? It doesn't say that. Nah. It says, like, cookies are interesting things. And I'm like, yeah, they got chocolate chip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caramel and peanut butter. And I love cookies. <laughs> like I don't know anything, right? You know, average users don't know anything. They're just pushing accept. Uh, what yeah. have what good have they done? And yet they have, I think, good intentions. They're trying well, they're to protect bloody, their people. Bad memes recently in the UK. <laughs> oh, I've heard. Yeah, no, that's really oh, going to work. I'll be right meme about that. Yeah. Oh, oh the yeah. UK is is losing their mind. I'm sorry, well, Dan. You have no, to go no, back there. This is there, EU. But, uh, this is EU. Like, it's uh, it's yeah, EU, it's, it's EU oh. copyright directive and. I now they're proud of the Brexit. I was definitely Remain. Then as soon as I heard, as soon as they that vote went in, I was like, well, it's kind of not so bad that we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I can deal with it now. It's trade offs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If they stop me from making memes and gifs and you know. They just, want to, they just want to set everything back in the box. It uh, reminds me of something Andreas talks about all the time, the Red Flag Act mm -hmm. in uh, Britain, that the uh, people who had horses and buggies were very threatened by these new automobiles, yeah. so they came up with a plan. Uh, they used their horse and buggy power and all of the legislators, and they said, okay, you can have an automobile, but you've got to have a guy 10 feet in front with a red flag, and you've got to have a guy 10 feet behind you in a red flag, and obviously you have to hire a whole crew now to run your automobile. Yeah, there's a car coming. There's a car coming. <laughs> Morning. Yeah. And obviously, this system completely fell apart. Mm -hmm. No one wants a horse and buggy anymore. But it Everyone lasted 30 years or something. It did, it did. Yeah. And it basically set back the British automotive mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. They don't have as good a, or competitive an automotive industry because of this ridiculous Red Flag Act. So you have to imagine if the EU is going to pass this Copyright Act, if they're going to warn you about cookies, it's going to be harder to read articles harder to have memes and communications and ways to have new ideas as well as political ideas, protest ideas. Uh, some of our best ideas are actually in memes and uh, they're setting themselves back. And uh, I'm not sure why. I think they're afraid of the power of memes, perhaps. Yeah, if you look at the video when the guy like passed it, he's in the, he's in the, yeah. he's just like, yeah. And you're like, dude, are I you, can make a meme of that. Like, aren't you meant that, to represent yeah. the people? You know, yeah, like, I yeah. went and spoke in the European Commission, and I was so pissed off at the guy because this was in 2016, I think, and he was a politician, and he was speaking, and he was like talking about how they need to control Bitcoin and monitor it and, you know, like it really inserting his uh, authority. Mm -hmm. So I stopped and I go, excuse me, is it true to say that your bills and your job is paid for by the taxpayers of the European Union? And he's like, yes, we have, we have nothing to hide there. Of course it is. I go, okay. So your entire position and organization is powered by the people of the European Union. And he's like, yes. I'm like, okay. So why do you feel like you somehow have an authority to insert what you think is best for them? If they want Bitcoin, if they want privacy, if they want these tools, who are you to deny it to them? It's like if I hire some guy and he's like, hey man, I'm going to do this for you and I don't like it, like I'll fire him. Do you get what I mean? Like why is it that we pay banks, we pay these politicians and they tell us what to do? I mean. Would anyone even hire someone to like, would you pay for someone to tell you what to do? You know what I mean? It's like, hey man, can you do this for me? Nah, 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 what I can do for you? It's like, <laughs> no man, I hired you for this role, That's you know right. what I mean? Help yeah. a brother out, yeah. speak to the people, why do they want these tools? And he hated it, man, he hated it. Like the way he looked at me was like a bit scary, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and I, 
Yeah, do you think that, 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 yeah, all these no coiners. Oh. So I do think that is the fundamental point where, where we are having this shift. It is from a, a citizen who is being governed, who is being represented by a authority. Yeah to a self-sovereign individual, a individed human being, who is not being represented, but who presents himself. Mm. And that is what Bitcoin and cryptography is about. I run my own full note. Yeah. I make the rules of my money. And I, I don't trust anyone, and I do not ask anyone for permission. And so I do think that there is a great tendency towards self-sovereignty and individual liberties uh, that will hopefully um, sweep past all these these representative governments who, as you said, fundamentally break uh, the, the contract that was initially set out, if you can even say that such a social contract exists. Read Lysander Spooner, No Treason, the uh, Constitution of No Authority, uh, which clearly shows that the Constitution has, has no rightful act whatsoever whatsoever, because I didn't sign it, right? I did not hire Angela Merkel to be president of Germany. I, I didn't sign any contract that gave her permission to take away my freedoms, my liberties. And uh, you know. Well, this goes down to, uh, there's two, is self-determination. So the international law of self-determination is what governments actually use to give themselves the authority. So they assume that you have chosen them. And using the same principles, you should be able to technically create any sort of governance system that you choose to. But because they have the monopoly on violence, they can, you know, assert their uh, authority a bit harder than I could. Um, that's one thing that's problematic. The second thing is, you know, if you look into these uh, roles within society, if there's, you know, there's a wonderful movie slash documentary called Fish Heads or something like that, and it goes around scanning, you know, you can literally scan a sociopath's brain, and by showing them certain images or certain emotional, uh, you know, inspiring uh, clips, you can see which part of the brain uh, lights up. And by doing this, you can scientifically prove if someone is a sociopath or not. And you know, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person, it could be either way. But using this technique, I don't understand why, you know, we have, if, if you're a pedophile, you have to let your neighbors know, right? You have to let, if you're a sex offender, you have to let the community know. So if you're a sociopath, why shouldn't the organization, why shouldn't the you know, people that you're ruling over know that you're a sociopath? And I would love this if, if, to be asserted as an option. Nothing should be forced upon people, but just an, as an option. So I would love to see like how many of these politicians, you know, these roles of power are actually filled by people who are after their own gratification. So, you know, I don't think the guy was there looking at, like, I don't think he went home going, I'm doing a great job for the European <laughs> Union people. Hero, yeah, you know, yeah, what yeah. I love Europe. Europe. Day. I'm doing a great job <laughs> for Europe. Yeah. Thank God. God bless Europe. You know, I think it's just like, yes, I get this role. I get to assert my power. I get to do things. Maybe I'll have a few backdoor deals with some organizations. Like, you know, you could just see it the way the guy was so cheerful in the, in the, in the, yeah. in, you know, the, when the meme was getting banned. It yeah. just shows, like, is that how the Europe feels? Are you representing Europe by being so cheerful right now? Or is it you and a bunch of your buddies that got paid out by some of these companies? Got, I don't know. Got stocks in copyright companies, yeah, right? You know? And lawyers, both lawyers and copyright yeah, companies. Yeah, you know, so these, right. are, these are very simple I'm things. I'm not saying he has. I've just, you know, yeah, we don't know. Allegedly. Allegedly. But no idea. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it sounds like a great request, but we can't even get our problem politicians to give us their tax records. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've gone backwards, actually. Obama didn't have a bathroom. No, the bar is so low. Uh, but I do think we should circle back and talk about uh, your famous line from your recent speech where you said, do you need a blockchain yeah. or do you need a therapist? Yeah. We just had a, a gentleman in here, and he seems like a really nice guy, and I didn't want to give him too hard a time. Uh, but basically, you know, he's created a meat database. And it seemed like it was functioning pretty well. Uh, you could put your information in. You could say, this meat is clean. It came from this farm. And, uh, you know, databases do have administrator roles and user roles. You can restrict the users so they can't edit the database. Uh, you can trust the administrators because you pay them money. Uh, but they're looking to convert this database to a blockchain. Oh, wow. uh, do you think this is a good idea? Do you think they should stick with the original meat database, as the audience said, proof of stake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're lying, but it was a great no, line. I like that so, one. Yeah. Well, there's, there's two aspects to this, right? The first one is that... You know, a lot of these organizations need to just pause for a second. You know, we spoke about this yesterday. Money has been supplied by the state for thousands of years. I don't understand why people are not excited that suddenly they have access to digital currencies, Bitcoin. Go and get it and exit. It's not that hard. I've lived of it for four years. I was like, I don't want to support this banking system. I remember in 2014, after I was just like completely, you know, within that world, I went into a bank and I was like, 
what is this place? <laughs> like, I, I felt like I had gone back in time. It's like pull this ticket and you're standing there waiting for your number. How can I help you? Give me your ID. Give me all this stuff. What do you want to do with your money? And I'm like, wow, I'm going back home, man. <laughs> all the other guy asked me, well, see, what's your Bitcoin address? Yeah. 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 Zoom. That's it. You send it and it's gone. And I was just like, and you, you know, I walked around suddenly and I felt like I was in a movie where I was just like woke up from a b bad nightmare. I was like jailed for like 30 years and I came out or something and I just like, society had just became crazy. You know, and I walked past and I saw these huge banking institutions and all, and they just like stick it in your face, you know? We robbed people, so we built this building. You helped donate to them. Yeah. Well. Build those beautiful right. arches yes. and you know, those yeah. marble yeah. columns. So like, you know, then he goes back to like, why are, you know, I feel like all these things are distracting. There was a guy that gave a talk like Bitcoin, not blockchain. So a lot of these organizations have come out and like blockchain is the important thing. You know, we spoke about this yesterday as well. You know, it's like oh, Satoshi made a mistake about Bitcoin. It was blockchain that he should have. That's right. Bitcoin. He should have. His big invention was blockchain. It was not Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, and he had no idea. He's such a great inventor. Whoops. You know? Yeah. 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 He didn't know it that he made a perfect and super ineffective efficient and fast database for dental records <laughs> I mean, how could he not know this well, and you were saying yesterday that the results of some kind of yeah, poll Deloitte, that they took Deloitte did a uh, poll on all the executives um, within uh, I'm not sure what sectors but various sectors the gas industry financial industry a lot of different industries and 70% of them said they were experts and there's nothing wrong with that if that was actually true but <laughs> their next response quickly you know uh, crumbled the, the house that they are built on, which they call themselves experts. And they said the most advantageous property of a blockchain was speed. So for me that they had forgotten about all these beautiful elements of immutability, you know, innovation without permission, accessibility from anywhere on the planet as long as you have internet. And the guy said even without internet, that's the, that's the next step where we're going to. And in African countries, Bitpasan, uh, you know, these organizations are working with, you know, inserting them with the communities that don't have financial systems. Two billion people on the planet don't have access to financial systems. People have forgotten this and they're like, yeah, bro, let's fucking put a blockchain on, on me mid industry there's like and I don't mean no disrespect to those people but and are you difficult. not amazed that you have this money have we have people forgotten and I feel like you know I go to these events like and and people are talking about how you know Cisco's executive is talking about how blockchain is going to be used and, and he describes the properties of it but these are all open source public blockchain properties they right. are not private corporate uh, proprietary blockchains that they are selling so for me, it's like, let's confuse people. We use the same things that they're after, but let's sell it to them, you know? And friends of mine are like, oh, aren't you excited the banks are gonna be using blockchain soon? I'm like, no, man. Why would I be excited? Like, I have no interest in banks. Like, it's just crazy. So the whole concept of like, do you need a blockchain? Do you need a therapist? I think for me, it's very realistic. Like, I feel like 80% of people should straight away, like just send them, send them to see someone. It's, it's okay, guys. <laughs> get you know? help, get it's, help. Yeah, get help. There's nothing wrong with it. If you feel like, you know, that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. But we see the same thing with AI, you know, it's become this buzzword. Where sure. Like AI, AI. But I had the guy that created Siri. That's the Apple one, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy that created Siri, you know, he was in a, a UNESCO house in Paris and he was giving a talk and he straight out told, he goes, you know, people don't like me to say this, but AI doesn't exist. He goes, all we have is this consolidated information that, you know, they, we can access and come up with some sort of result, but the AI for it to go research and like learn and, right, you know, right. we, we, we don't have it. So it's all just a marketing term. That's uh, what it seems to me recently. AI like used to be Hal and he's thinking and everything. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, we asked a thousand questions and we asked a thousand questions really quick. So it seems really smart, um, but it's certainly not what we were promised. Yeah. It's not a thinking computer. It's Self -learning. just, it's just an asking thousand questions computer really fast yeah like someone yeah. said to, to create an AI you have to understand how we work and we don't know how we work <laughs> no, so sir, we can't no. create something, you know what I mean that's so right we don't know how moral values work how do you program moral values how do you program principles how do you program these mm -hmm. things um, and you know it's just it's just not gonna happen so you know you see so many applications that's why I lose it these ICOs and like it's like, oh, I'm going to create a token that when you like take three steps, you get paid and then it makes it like, <laughs> it's like, dude, why don't you use that same energy and just go convert six people to use Bitcoin? That would be your energy used in a very, very good way. You know, for thousands of years, people have been waiting for this. Why not?
I mean, you know, that's why I really want to create this documentary that I'm working on at the moment because I feel I go to all these events and these so-called executives and blockchain experts, right, right. bloody experts, mate. <laughs> um, they're everywhere. And like, you know, I need people to need the information. Like I had a friend come up to me and she's like, oh, Bitcoin, yeah, but it's only good application is money laundering. And my, my jaw just dropped to the floor. I'm like, okay, so the internet's only application must be child pornography. Like, what are you saying to me right now? <laughs> you know, have you forgotten about all these other elements and let's focus on this part but yeah this is how it is and people need to be educated you know that's why I really do my best to go at events and if there's events out there you want me to come to I do not hold back I speak the truth from the bottom of my heart and I hope to do so as long as I can live um, and that's it man like I, people need to know the real examples it's not an ideology there are platforms working none of you know yeah, Bitcoin isn't even its final release. It's still in beta mode, but it's working. Like it's it's been functioning. You tell me a proprietary uh, system that hasn't crashed for ten years. Mm -hmm. Like you just tell me that. Well, nearly ten years it's been. Uh -huh. But well, and with an uptime of ninety nine point nine 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 two percent, it's not perfect. Okay, we take that. Uh, but try coming close to that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's not just the uptime, right? It's the immutability and it's the censorship resistant. If you pay sufficient fees, uh, you can you can send any amount of satoshis that you want from wherever you are, whoever you are. It doesn't matter because Bitcoin is mathematics, and Bitcoin doesn't care if you are the president or if you are a, a homeless person. It is really completely. Uh, just utterly uh, indistinguishable. If you play by the rules, if you play by Nakamoto consensus rules, you are being treated as a peer on the network, and you have no privilege right whatsoever. Can I can I mention my my my, my site so people can check it out? Yeah, of course, please chill as hard as you can. Cool. Cool. I don't know, man. I don't want to be marketing myself. See, I ask, man. I don't just put it in their people's face. So my name is Amin Rafi. Uh, you can find me at A-R-A-F-I-E-E.com -E um, and if you look up my name, Amin, A-M-I-N, uh, Rafi, R-A-F-I-E-E, uh, you can find, find me on Twitter, you can find me on Twitter, I'm on Evoked, E-V-0-K-3-D, and yeah, you just hit me up, I'm always interested to chat, I feel like I'm a humble guy, you know, I like to speak to anyone, man, I don't have any of these prejudices. Um, one thing I do want to mention is the biometrics that people are pushing out. So there's a lot of platforms that are coming out saying, hey, you know, the unbanked people, refugees, you know, people of human trafficking, they deserve IDs, so let's grab their biometrics. And I think this is a very dangerous tool. There are blockchain solutions that offer the same kind of level of security and uh, service without taking someone's biometric. And after World War II, we saw that if you take someone's uh, identity in terms of what the religious status was, which is what the French had a database of, which is what the Germans used to quickly uh, round up uh, the targeted uh, population. Uh, you know, it, it can it can result, it can have devastating results. And biometrics, I mean, that was their surname. You know, that's why they were uh, a lot of the Jewish population was able to change their surname for, and from there gain a new identity and remove themselves from that uh, threat. But with biometrics, you know, unless you go, I don't know, you know how hard it is to change your biometrics, especially if you have your fingerprints. I have no idea personally, but I think it's not very simple. Um, so if you have these collective databases, especially people running away from countries, so what if, you know, they get tracked through some sort of a system, let's say even the database is secure, but someone can at one stage gain access to it, I think it's horrible. So people need to be made aware of the, a lot of these aspects, but I hope, I hope we can kind of do our best. I mean, you got this TV show going on, which I think is amazing, you know, like people need to hear about it and you interview some really intelligent people. So I think you've done a great job. This is what it's about. Like you could be just chilling out somewhere, not caring, but you're doing this, you're, you're, you're interviewing people, you know, and people get to learn, um, you know, the participants of this event and every event you go to. And I think you deserve a lot of credit for that. You know, I know so many people that just bought Bitcoin and they're just like huddleless, so to say, they don't even know where that term comes from. And, you know, <laughs> I hear, a, yeah, life. I hear oh, he's going down for dear life, yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's what I've heard, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, Legit source. Yeah, yeah. It's just a bloody spelling mistake on Bitcoin. Yeah. Talk, that's that's so right, that's yeah. right. Um, so, you know, you know, it's, it's a lot of people that have it and do nothing to, to, to promote it. And, you know, that's their choice. I'm not going to look down on them. But if, if, if you have it, you understand, you, you, you kind of have a responsibility. Like, if it wasn't for this Bitcoin blockchain, I wouldn't have been able to travel to all the locations I have. I do my work and I see sightsee as well. I get to meet great people. I would not be who I am, be where I am, or have done the things I have without this. So I owe it 
you know, mm. my life to go and like tell people, hey, this is what Bitcoin can do. This is what blockchain can do. Like focus on the money part. Let's solve money. And then we can talk about meat industry, steak industry, shoe industry, whatever the hell you want, man. Right, right. Let's solve the main problem, which is that people are unbanked 2 billion of them. And a lot more people are in debt. And the US debt is like 20 trillion like right now or something like that. It's mm. huge amounts. And let's not focus on the stakes, man, you know? <laughs> but that's just how it is. Um, yeah. Well, it's a, it's allegedly it's a new industry and everyone's going in every direction trying to help out. And I think they mean well and they want to have businesses. They want to make money in the steak market uh, and they're selling a lot of steak and it's good and it's bad. Um, but you just have to look at the bigger picture. And for me, when I tried to analyze it a few months ago, I said to myself, why am I such a Bitcoin maximalist? Why didn't I buy these stupid altcoins and make lots of money and retire? And it turns out that I care a lot more about the idea of sound money. And I think the idea of sound money can change the world. Right now we have governments that just whenever they need anything, they print money, they've turned that crank. Uh, and sometimes it's good, disaster relief is good. Sometimes it's bad, they buy bombers, they start wars. Uh, this money printing though is at the core of all of these problems and for me bitcoin really solves that uh, i thought we printed our last bit of money when satoshi launched the uh, the, the zero block or the initiation the genesis, genesis. block um, at the beginning there that seemed like that was the end of money printing to me and then everyone else came along and they said hey uh, we can make a copy of that we can print our money too and uh, we need to print money for this and that and you need a token for this and a token for that and um, tone used to joke uh, that you know when eBay started and Amazon started they didn't just start Amazon coin they didn't just start eBay coin uh, but now people are like they should and then we should trade eBay coin for Amazon coin oh. in 12 hops with no money loss uh, all the time in this imaginary perfect market that does not exist oh, wow. and uh, if one of your hops went through Toys R Us coin uh, you could have lost it all because they went bankrupt <laughs> and people that were holding gifts <laughs> gift cards for Toys R Us and they're like I've got a hundred bucks I'm gonna wait for the new Red Dead Redemption or two or something to come out uh, they lost all their Toys R Us money. All of those gift card people lost it all. So if you're doing this perfect market trading token for token and you hit one of these bad companies on the wrong day at the wrong time, you could lose it all. It doesn't make any sense. Why not just use Bitcoin? It's because they can't just print their own Bitcoin. And they're all freaked out by this and they all think, oh, it would be better if you'd let us print a bunch and have a pre-mine and then we'll exit and then we'll be on a beach in Uruguay, which sounds really nice. Um, but it's not going to work because Bitcoin is real money and your fake money is fake money and people are eventually going to figure it out. And even if you didn't have to fill out the forms to make your IPO because it's an ICO and it's totally different, uh, <laughs> they're going to find you. The Paycoin guys are in jail. The OneCoin people are on the run. We're going to find them. Uh, she said she'd double your coins by November. We're going to find you. And uh, you're going to go to jail. So just don't do it. Don't print your own money. We did it one more time. Bitcoin, that's the end. If you want to print your own money, get a miner. You can get a little bit of Bitcoin with a miner, but that's it. No, for sure, I, I agree. You know, like there's some applications of it that I understand, but a lot of it is, as you said, like, it, you know, the, you, you couldn't print more Bitcoin, so you just gone out of your way to create these. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, don't want to get, I get angry, man. Yeah, that's, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. It me, and we you know. still have to be polite. These are nice people. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to drag down their business model. I just believe differently. We disagree, uh, and we'll let the future find out who's right. So, And that's the beautiful thing of the free market, right? Mm -hmm. All the ideas in this permissionless innovation ecosystem will be tried and tested. And there will be a bunch of nonsense out there. Like 99.9% .9 of it will all be nonsense. Uh, but this one little tiny thing, that will change the world. Uh, we believe it's Bitcoin. We don't know. We have no clue whatsoever. There are no Bitcoin experts. You realize that when you come to these conferences, <laughs> all these amazing people, right. that you don't know jack shit, pretty much, right? Uh, so it, it, this is going to be a wild ride, and we will sooner or later discover uh, what the true sound money is in this economy. Well, I got my bet on Bitcoin. All right, and uh, we're getting a message from the booth. It looks like it's time to take a break. Uh, so. There's one more. One we, more guest. We, we got to talk to Gotenna. Mesh Networks, guys. Mesh Networks. Oh, <laughs> All right, maybe we'll do one more. But I mean, one more time, tell them where they can follow you on oh, Twitter, yeah, sure. where I they can learn it. about your tour. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my name is Amin Rafi, A M I N uh, Rafi, R A F I E E. Uh, they can find me on Twitter at EV0K3D. 
and you can find my website at a rafi r a f i w e dot com. And if you look up my name, you can find me in other many other places, my Telegram, my Skype, and everything else. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you guys. Be good. I'll be good at it. Um, and yeah, man, get out of that financial system. It's very easy. There's Bitcoin ATM upstairs, which I'll document in my documentary, which you can just like put your money in, you're out. It's that simple. Uh, or find people and trade with them. Don't use Coinbase. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks so much, yeah, Anine, for joining us. Great. Thanks so much. Always, man. Good chat. Cheers.